welcome to my office right today's job i'm changing this uh, potterton primer um heat exchanger is leaking on it. it's it been um, capped off actually um fuse has been removed uh, gas has been isolated so yeah um, take this cupboard down i'm putting it back to the 816 in um gas is 22 where it leaves the meter but i don't know what i'll have to do is probably pick it up on the 15 mil um, and then just try it. I don't know how far it runs along in 22. It's only feeding this boiler now, so it's probably going to be 22. I might even be able to find it down there. We're going to have to take that washing machine out anyway to get the condens down uh, into this kitchen sink. Um, boxing at the top will probably have to come off. I don't know where I'm going to be able to get the filter in yet. I might have to go in the airing cupboard, but we'll have a look basically. Um, first job, take the cupboard off and yeah, see what we're left with. So I've just removed this section of box in. That's our flow coming off the top of the heat exchanger. Uh, it's marked up flow. I don't know if you can just see it as well. That's our return. It's unusual. They normally put the drain off tap on the return. Uh, but I might be able to sneak the filter in here and then make this section of box from, boxing removable with some, you know, uh, cap screws or something. Um, we'll have a look at that anyway. Um, so I'll get the cold feed off. There is a job, obviously, you can drain the heat exchanger from there. Um, but I'll probably pop hose straight into there get the flue disconnected this boiler looks like it lifts up and then out um so yeah we'll do that first and see how we get on this is the airing cupboard um somebody's put a service valve on the heating coal feed we're probably going to change that for a lever for the time being i'll just switch that off that'll probably just block up in there anyway because obviously it's only a small borehole um comes down into an air set that is our vent uh, that's our flow from our boiler vent coal feed these sometimes block these air seps um they're not i don't actually like them very much um through our pump into our three port valve b port for the hot water around the coil that's our return and that's our flow to our heating uh, so it's a standard y plan set up cylinder stat room stat um, programmer Let's see if this one works it looks all right actually Before we go any further with the gas or take the boiler off the wall we're going to get a tightness test done on it led by tightness as i say it's 22 mil where it leaves that's an old gas fire um that's been capped off or removed and it's 22 where it goes through uh, to the boiler which is just on the other side the kitchen's just through there um so it'll probably be okay with a 16 kilowatt boiler it just depends if it reduces straight to 15 mil obviously we can't see that because the units um, but we'll see if we can find it. Um, obviously, we're looking for normal stuff on off tape, uh, earth bonding, um, you know, general stuff. I uh, can't actually see the sleeve on that gas pipe, but we'll chip away a little bit of that cement. Um, where are we? Yeah, it's looking okay so far. We'll lock open that three port. <laughs> that air vent will change. Just emptying all the water out of the radiators. We'll open the uh, the air taps up. Yeah, that one's that one's crispy. We should just be able to screw a new one straight in there. It's on a screwed uh, T. Start the highest one, the highest point on the system, and just let them breathe in to empty all the water out. If you fold these tabs in, chip away the sand and cement. You can normally. Get the, lift the boiler off with the flue on, if that makes sense. I've disconnected everything off the boiler now, so my flow return, my gas, and my electrics. Um, tricky bit now is going to be getting this off the wall. Um, they're never easy. I'll try and get in the shot if I can. 
You're probably going to see my bum crack here because my trousers always fall down on your feet. So I can put you. Right, it's always a relief to see them off the wall. I know what you're saying, I can't like with speed fit on the gas. It's only while I'm on site, the gas is off. I just don't want any rubbish, insulation or anything like that dropping into my uh, gas pipe. Um, so yeah, so I'm out of breath, I'll just carry that to the van uh, or put it on the drive for the tap man to take. Um, but yeah, that's the worst bit of the job done. It don't get any easier and I think the older you get, the harder it gets. Sorry to any apprentices watching, but it does. The good thing with these boilers is they give you an option of a rear flue. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do on this one. So it's just a standard Baxi telescopic rear flue kit. Uh, you can go off the top if you want, obviously, with an elbow. Um, your test points are still there for your flue as well. Um, so you can still test them from the top, even if you're rear flue in. Um, it's just going to be better on this job, I think. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do anyway. So apply that, um, make it all look neat and tidy. The cupboard's going back over it anyway. Um, but it'll be absolutely perfect when we do done, hopefully. There's the boiler on the wall, floor connected. Just got the pipes. I think I'm going to be able to get the filter above. Um, but I'll make that panel uh, removable, either with some magnets or some brass cap screws or something. Solder the socket on the return, just to swing my filter down a bit, because I couldn't get the lid off before. Maybe should have put a little kick on it, because the pipe's leaning a touch where it comes out the ceiling. I'll probably be able to straighten it up in reality though. Get a dish underneath it as well. I just don't like the way it's leaning a bit, but yeah, I think I'm all right. What I'm thinking of the return. 45 it back behind the flow, which will obviously kick straight in. Uh, I've just put a slight kick on the pipe, um, and then I can just solder that in. Then I don't think that's. I don't think you're going to get it much better. The reason I haven't swung it out to the side, I want it to go it within the box in. That's going to. I'm going to say I'm going to remove a ball, and obviously you can get the lid off that, uh, servicing and stuff. I left it high enough so you can get a drip tray under, and low enough you can get the lid off. <sighs> that's yeah. That's we're going to do it. So when I come to flush the system, my magna cleanse will bolt straight on, straight on there. But for the time being, I'll just pop the filter on, just clean the pipe work, all the flux and stuff off. That's got the flow return, um, flue all connected. I've still got the gas and the condensate to do, which I'm going to do next. Uh, brickwork and stuff I'll leave till last. I can patch it up from outside in. I've got TRVs to put on this system, update the controls. Uh, yeah, oh, I'll flush it out. Um, but what I'll do is I'll put the magnet lens on it last. Um, but yeah, that's gone all right. Uh, I don't really see what else I can do differently um, with that, but yeah. My only concern is the gas really. Um, we've got a 16 kilowatt boiler, 
I think the gas must run, it, well it must go under the floor and then it probably comes up in this box and it's just where it goes to 22. I can pull the washing machine out and find if it's 22 below there but I mean the last bit will probably be on, okay on 15. You would never get away with it on a combi but on a heat boiler sometimes you can. What we'll do is we'll gas rate it, um, make sure we've got no more than one millibar drop across the from the meter so if the meter's got 21 millibar we need it when the boiler's on maximum and all of the appliances are on max we can have no more than a one millibar drop um across so yeah well if i can't find the 22 i'll connect it up in 15 and then if i have to go a bit further or i don't really want to run a new gas in but worst case scenario i can run it around the outside of the building um but i'd sooner keep it under the floor as it is and then we'll work it work it from there i've done them on here before and they've been okay you just you just don't know if, well, it's 22 where it leaves, you just don't know how far it runs because obviously you can't see that. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll be all right. We always are. I've done the gas like that. As I say, I'm going to try it. Uh, maximum working pressure and see if it's okay. If not, I'm going to have to either drop a new one through the worktop and find the 22. Um, it's only 15 down there. It's hot and cold dropping in there as well. Um, for the kitchen sink. But yeah, we'll give it a go. If it's no good, we'll have to upgrade it. On that, I'm just going to have to drill it as far in this corner as it will go. Run behind the washing machine. Luckily, it's a slim line, but we should be able to get it far, you know, really far back anyway. And then we're just going to have to boss it. That unit's got no back in it anyway. Um, so we just have to, we might have to come in front or something. And then boss it into this push fit pipe there. We might have enough room for a T. If not, I'll have to put a uh, CK1 clamp, like a... Um, it's like basically a strap boss for condensed pipe, but they go on each and a half inch and a quarter of my cow pipe make them. So I'll try and get it into there. We've actually got, looking at it, a stand pipe at the back. Um, okay, so the washing machine hose goes into a stand pipe, which isn't actually trapped, so I'm surprised that's not smelling. Um, but we'll go into here anyway. I think that's going to be easiest. Yeah, condense is often the worst bit. Why? I don't know why they haven't put them in there. The washing machine, but they haven't. glue will push you up and in if that makes sense and block it Got a nice little fall on that standoff ones in the van uh, just with the spaces behind but we want a nice drop on that all the way into our waist. Right, I'm going to use a McAlpine clamp 1H on these basically just a strap bar to come with inch and a quarter inch and a half. Drill a hole, um, comes with an elbow as well or you can obviously connect your condense straight in there and then just tighten them up 
Um, if I'm honest, so the only thing with these, if you're not a little bit careful, can block up. Um, but I haven't got room to get a T in, it's just how it's fallen. So one of them is going to be my best option. Um, so it's just the Clamp 1H. They're called, I think they used to be called the CK1 or something. I'll probably change the name. These will do push fit and solvent as well. So you just want the thinner ones for inch and a half and the fatter ones we can chuck in the bin this time because um, they're for inch and a quarter. They pop pop inside. I'm struggling to do one ended, but they go inside there. We we'll drill a little hole. Luckily on this one, um, we can actually spin that pipe because it's push fit and then we can spin it back to where we want. So it will just go like that. And in fairness, if it ever does block, you've got a nice and easy access to uh, just undo it and wet back it out. But we've got a nice fall on it, so there's no reason they're approved. There's no reason why it should be able to cause a problem. That's the boiler all done. Um, pipe works all done, condens is all in. I still need to gas test the gas. It is currently 10 past 12. Um, this afternoon, I'm going to get all the TRVs on. It looks as if they've sent me some 15 mil and some 10 mil out. Um, they are 15 mil ones that I need. Um, but yeah, I can either run back to the merchants. Probably not going to get this done today anyway. Because I've still got brickwork to do, patching up. Um, I need to patch that up or the wiring. So yeah, there's a bit to crack on with and obviously the flush. So yeah, I'm never getting done today in a million years. Um, but yeah, I'll go around, get these red valves on. Some of them are 10, some of them are 15. Somebody's obviously picked the wrong one, so it doesn't matter. They're 10 mil. Um, yeah, we'll get these done, what we can. And yeah, we'll be back tomorrow to finish off then. I'm not going to film me putting all the TRVs on, but I am going to put them on. Basically, it's regulation um, when you change a boiler to bring it up to standard. So we need to put a smart thermostat in. Uh, TRVs and stuff like that. Somebody's used Luxure drain offs on all the upstairs radiators as well. I think that, this whole estate is done like that. So all I'm going to do is whip that off and just put a TRV in. Um, TRV on all the ones that I haven't got them. So yeah, we'll get that done. I think there's seven to do in this house, seven or eight. Um, and then tomorrow, we'll get it all flushed down, get all the brickwork done and stuff. Just using these uh, instinct ones, they're not bad. Just changing this AAV. That was the old one, I've just unscrewed. I think, yeah, that's seen better days. It's actually onto a 3 8 top. Some of these you can actually take out live because it acts like a check valve, but I've never really trusted them. So I've just locked out the new one up, that'll screw straight in in there, and it'll make it easier when we come to fill it up. Right, we're just getting this filled back up. I've put a lever valve on the cold feed now, just up there. Let that gurgle through. I've got this three port locked open. We'll go around and bleed the radiators. And we should be good. We'll get the magnet cleanse bolted on it. Still need to wire it up actually, the boiler, sort the controls out, but make sure we've got no leaks for a start. I always start bleeding from the downstairs up. I've been around and put all the TRVs on. These downstairs ones were a pain. Um, just so tight in the box and then that, but we did it, as we always do. So we'll get these blades and I can get it fired up. So I've got the boiler all wired. Uh, I've just bought my magma cleanse on. All, it's all filled up. I just need to turn them two valves on. I've just sat it outside. Um, so yeah, we can run, run the system and can start to get it commissioned. Uh, I don't think it's too dirty, but I always bolt the magma cleanse on if I'm not doing a full power flush, um, basically to keep the water clean. Uh, it'll help you know, get all the crap out of the system. So yeah, we'll do that and then we'll see what it's like. So we'll just bleed this carefully. Make sure I have to... You have obviously got them on the top. Um, it's only event system. So. 
yeah, they're full. Uh, we'll straight the boiler up. So I am going to change this programmer uh, for a second and just put the hot water on. I'm going to put an EPH one on. They're a straight swap on these back plates from these Danfoss. Um, but I fire the hot water up for a start just to get all the air out of the boiler. It makes it a bit easier. The boiler might need purging. I'm going to do a gas rate. Um, I've already done time instead. It's a bit of air in the boiler. You can hear it. A bit of air in the gas. Farted a bit. But um, yeah, we'll make sure we've got flow and turn the right way around. So the flow should start to get hot which it is ever so slightly getting hot and then we do gas rate and obviously all my safety checks on the boiler still got the brickworks packed up as well um really i probably shouldn't fire the boiler without the brickwork being done but yeah we are here so that brick will come out that brick will come out that brick will come out and i'll just basically tube it in as best we can the bit of the look yeah we've got flow and turn the right way around anyway um it should have been right but you never know if the old ones Done. I don't know if so yeah put that some of this on 68 just hoping that's fine so I don't think this system's got a lot of air and nothing going down the heat in that's our heat input that one's stone cold that one's red hot because we put the auto air vent on the top yeah it's lovely that's what we want to see sometimes these can block Vents, vents a little bit warm, cold feeds cold. It will be warm though because it'll be purging. Yeah, I think we're all right. So we have already got a serial alarm on this job, which is in date. We'll get this fitted in the correct location. It's a pre-existing one, but it was only manufactured in 21 and it's a 10 year one. Um, so obviously on gas boilers now and, all, and, and I think oil boilers, um, you've got to fit a serial alarm. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is gas rate and inlet pressure to make sure that gas is the right size. Um, now we've got the boiler running and I think we're getting there. Obviously I've got a bit of patching up and stuff, but we're all right. So I've just put the boiler on high fire and we've got 20 millibar inlet pressure. I don't know if you can see that on my gauge. 20 top and bottom, so we did have it zeroed. Um, so yeah, that should be fine. What I'm going to do is gas rate it. Obviously to put it on low fire, it's just press it again. And then you can hardly hear these boilers to be fair when they're running. And then high fire, just click that one again. 20 millibar, it's absolutely perfect. Uh, gas rate and yeah, analyzer. Let's just, I'll just leave it on high fire while I do my gas rate. Do you gas rate yours over one minute or two minutes now? That's the question. Um, TB162 states you can gas rate over one minute now. They reckon it's better for the environment. It gives you more accurate reading. Um, it would save 600,000 tons of CO2. Um, yeah, I mean, traditionally we've always done it, I think since about 95, uh, 94, 95, over two minutes. I think that's when it came in. But now obviously the same one minute is, is perfectly acceptable. So if you turn up to a training center or something like that, and they get you to do it over two minutes, really you can do it over one minute. Um, or do you not bother at all like a lot of guys? <laughs> I don't know, but I always do mine. Just another safety check into it. Um, so yeah, do it how you want, but as long as the reading's right, yeah, we should be all right. It even says on here you can toggle between one minute or two minute tests now. They've updated that. Um, so yeah, it's coming in slowly and obviously as more people come aware of it, you know. But yeah, I've done. I've actually done this over two minutes, but I can do it over one minute again to see the difference. We're going to do it over one minute um, just because we kind of see the difference, but I don't think it will make a huge amount of difference in terms of the readings. The only thing with these meters, you have to keep pressing the button on them for it to update, which is really annoying. Uh, some of the smart meters now do tell you the gas rate if you keep recycling through, but this one doesn't. So we've got about another 15 seconds on this. And then we'll hit the button again. So that's gone to 113. So it's coming out exactly the same um, within a percentage of a point so yeah do them how you want well, well do them probably to one minute if that's what they're saying but if you're doing them to two minutes it ain't gonna make that much difference i've had to go back to my original brush because my new one fell to pieces i've had this one over 15 years since i started seeing some action i'm thinking about taking it to the repair shop you know get it all rebristled but yeah done some work that has that's been running about two hours now. I did all the radiators individually, agitated them, 
Uh, there is a bit in it, but it's not it's not the worst I've ever seen. Uh, so what we'll do now is get some inhibitor in it, put everything back together, and yeah, get the job wrapped up. Before anybody says it, I'm no bricklayer by a long stretch. I've got everything toothed out. The bricks are a very good match, so I should be able to do something similar. Um, it'll probably look, it'll look okay when I'm done. It always does, but yeah. Not just the plumber as well. I've even cut the customer's grass while I was here for them. Hate to see it up there. So yeah, I just did it. it only took ten minutes. Oh, you can't even tell where we've been. Look, 